Hey guys, if you like what you're seeing, be sure to click below to subscribe and share. It's not just about the photograph, it's the outdoor experience. Keep in mind everything that you need to know about photography. F-stop, shutter speed, lens selection. Nice photo, I've got beautiful light now. Oh my God. I'm your host, Doug Gardner, and your wild photo adventure starts now. Fall in the Southern Appalachian Mountains, and what a beautiful time of year to be out exploring. This week, myself and Kevin Adams are gonna be out photographing waterfalls. Now, Kevin has promised me that he's got something really unique in store for us. I'm your host, Doug Gardner, and your wild photo adventure starts now. Even though I love shooting wildlife, I mean, that's my main thing, Kevin. You know, that's that's where my passion is. I always enjoy shooting a beautiful waterfall. Oh, There's yeah. something about it, you know, I love a waterfall. How could you not like a waterfall? And I've got a nice one I'm gonna take us to today. I shoot it quite a bit, but it's always different, you know? Every time you go, there's something different, so I'm excited about that. If we have time, I got another one we'll go to. Okay. We'll have to watch out for this weather, though. Yeah, there's a front it's supposed to be coming through, yeah. I think. Yeah, yeah. Whoa, 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 it's a tree in the road. Oh boy, Jeez. <laughs> tell you that, that could have been rough if we hadn't seen that tree. Doug, I think this will be a good vantage point, but watch yourself here. That's kind of a little cliffy area. Yeah, that's a nice little drop right there. Yeah, I believe this will work fine. Wow, Kevin, what a beautiful waterfall. This thing's got a lot of character to it. Yeah, I really like this falls, Doug. The cool thing I like about it is it's out in the open, so you can shoot it whether it's a sunny day or if it's a cloudy day, it doesn't make any difference. Yeah. And you know, on a sunny day, since it is out in the open, it, gets, it receives even illumination. So the entire falls, you don't have that extreme contrast situation that you have. Right, you know, right. It works good. Well, now you are using your polarizer filter, right? You didn't just ask me that, <laughs> did you? I know you're the king of polarizers. Oh, come on. Hey, when I'm shooting waterfalls and streams, the polarizing filter stays on. Yeah, it makes all a huge long. difference, doesn't yeah. it? When you're shooting waterfalls or streams or anything with water or wet rocks, Use that po circular polarizer filter. It makes a huge difference in your photographs. Big it saturates difference. the color and it removes any glare that you're getting off of the sky um, that you'll find on the surface of the wet rocks or the water. So it really makes a huge difference. It's kind of a pain, especially when you have a lens hood like this. I have to take the hood off to re-rotate the filter because when you change from vertical to horizontal, of course, you got to change the filter back. You know, it's, it's funny, we have more fall color actually registering on camera than what um, the naked eye is, is showing me. So this is um, a Well, and a polarizing this. filter is a reason for that yeah. too. It's helped saturate your foliage. Kevin, yeah, what uh, shutter speed are you using for this? Well, right now, right now I'm at a half second after the clouds moved in, and that's pretty good. That's giving a nice silky look to the falls. There's so much water coming over, it's, you know, half second right. is enough to do that. You know, when we first got here and the sun was shining, I was shooting a faster speed because sometimes with the large, powerful falls like this, right. if you shoot with a faster speed, like maybe a 60th of a second or faster, then it freezes that motion of the water, right. and that can look good too. It just, just depends on what you like, you know, it's personal yeah, preference. Yeah, now the you know? small, dainty falls, I usually don't like a fast shutter speed no. on those no matter what, but a large, powerful one like this, certainly. 
And I was doing that when we first got here and yeah. the sun was shining, you know, but now with the clouds. Hmm. Yeah, so we're using a much longer shutter speed now. Yeah, yeah, now that we have the cloud cover, we've got less light, so. You know, folks, since waterfalls, you know, generally a, a vertical format, um, you know, don't forget to, to try those horizontal angles too. You know, you never know what composition you can come up with. Um, you know, waterfalls, that's the neat thing about them. You can shoot them wide, you can shoot them with telephoto lenses, you know, you can shoot them vertical, horizontal. It's just, you got to get creative with the angles. Um, if you have the opportunity, it's always best to, you know, move all the way around the waterfall and, and shoot it from multiple different angles. Don't just guess what do you think it would look like from this, from the right side, or what it would look like from the left side or above it. Actually take your camera and go down there and, and try those angles, if it's possible. Now in this scenario right here, it's a long ways to the other side, and we've got to cross a, a pretty good river to get there, so um, we only have this angle and then a, a angle um, a little bit higher elevation, but this angle gives us a much more intimate feel with this waterfall. Boy, Doug, that sore throat of yours is starting to sound really bad. Yeah, it's pretty bad. I'm suffering from a cold, folks. Yeah, this is, this is beautiful, but I tell you what, I'd like to squeeze in another waterfall for the day's yeah. up. Yeah, I'm done. Let's go. Let's do it. Man, I'm in heaven here. This is great. We got a nice little cascade right in the foreground so I can get right up on it with the wide angle lens. The water kind of runs at a diagonal up through, which looks really cool, just nice. One thing I have to be careful about though is I don't want to get too close on this cascade. I don't want to frame too tight because I don't want to have that white water that just rushes right out to the edges of the frame. I want to give it some room to breathe. Works better that way. And the really cool thing that I like about this is we got here just after a rain. So all the rocks are wetted down. The foliage is wetted down. Put a polarizing filter on here as I have. Rotate it to maximum intensity and we have some really nice saturation in the moss, the rocks, the water, the foliage, everything. It just looks great. Wow, that's really nice. I tell you, even if I am coming down with the flu, it's worth getting out here today and shooting this. This is really nice. Kevin had a really nice horizontal shot up at the top of this cascade. And, but this is a good situation for a vertical shot too. I'm able to get this cascade coming down through the right bottom right hand side of my frame. I'm also able to include some beautiful yellow fall color at the top right hand side of my frame. And then by tilting the camera down and shooting with a wide angle lens, I'm actually at 28 millimeters right now, and I'm able to get some of the slower moving um, stream pools right here in the bottom of the frame. There's moss on the logs. This is, um, this is the kind of shot you want to look for. This is really nice. Because I'm trying to include so much in this shot from right in front of the camera to a good 30 or 40 yards away, I'm having to shoot at F22 so that I have plenty of depth of field. With some lenses, you gotta be careful though, they're known to have uh, diffraction problems. So it's important to test your lens and be, be sure that you can shoot at f-stops of 16 and 22.
Wow, this has been really special. It's getting dark now, it's getting late in the afternoon, and the weather forecast says that this is supposed to clear out tonight. If it does, Kevin has promised me he's got something really special planned for us. I have no clue what it is knowing Kevin, but I guess we're about to find out. Kevin, where on earth are you taking me? Trust me, Doug. That's what I'm scared of. <laughs> so Kevin, why'd you drag me down here to a waterfall in the middle of the night? On a cold night at that. We can't shoot pictures of a waterfall in the dark. Can't take pictures in the dark. Now, where have I heard that before? Now, Doug, you know how much I like night photography. And I'm going to show you that we can take pictures in the dark. And besides, it's not completely dark anyway. We've got a half full moon. And we're going to use that light from the half full moon to photograph the waterfall. Okay. Wouldn't have to have it, but since we have it, we're going to take advantage of that and use it to illuminate the scene. And it's going to look pretty good. It's the, what's going to happen is the light from the moon is going to illuminate the waterfall. It's going to illuminate the sky. I'm going to include with some of my compositions, I'm going to have part of the sky in. Okay. So we're going to see kind of a blue sky with stars in it, oh, which wow. is going to look pretty cool. Now, the cool. the uh, the moon, the half moon by itself, is that going to be just enough to, to do this scene? It'll be enough to do it pretty good. But now, if you look around, it's like the vegetation over here. It's just going to be dark. And the, and the rocks on the side, we've got a nice foreground right down here. I'm going to have to throw a little extra light onto it okay. to illuminate that. Uh, but that's not going to be a problem. I mean, I've been here a lot shooting without any moonlight at all. Okay. And I'd like to talk to you about that too. Right now I want to get with the moonlight and get that part of it done. But look, Doug. <laughs> See? It's pretty bright. <laughs> this is pretty bright, yeah. Just a little LED flashlight. I'm going to use it to illuminate the sides of the waterfall. Probably not going to touch on the waterfall itself because the moon is going to put enough light on okay. that. That's you know. hard to imagine. Speaking of light, too, God, you know, typically, I don't need this. Typically, when I'm out photographing at night, I'll use a red light so that I can see and get stuff out of my pack yeah, and get everything set up. It doesn't destroy your night vision, man. Exactly, yeah. exactly. But with these monster mega lights that you brought out here so that you could illuminate up everything. All you told me was... We're going hiking at night and you need to bring light, so that's what I did. <laughs> I wasn't expecting that, but, <laughs> but so yeah, and of course we'll be turning those off when I'm actually doing the exposure yeah. so that they don't affect the scene. And we got to work quick because that, that moon is going is setting pretty quick. Yeah, I'm gonna get I'm doing a as you can see, I'm doing a vertical composition here. And uh, and actually, I have to say, those lights of yours are helping me compose a little bit, but it's not going to let me get the focus that I need. What I typically do with focus is I'll shine the light onto the waterfall right. or onto something, and I'll use autofocus yeah. to autofocus on that. Yeah, so that's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to take my, my bright light and, uh, and get the focus set. It is quite amazing that that little flashlight can do all this. This is a pretty is this bright a special light. special flashlight? No, it's a, you can buy this in any hardware store. Okay. Um, it's not a problem. Now, sometimes if I can't do that, then I, I can actually, I will actually walk into the scene and I'll lay the flashlight down, point it back up at the camera. Give something to focus then on. I'll autofocus on that and it works good. Pretty idea. Good idea. But what I'm doing here, I'm getting a, I've got a vertical shot, I've got the waterfall over on the left hand side, I've got this foreground right down here, and if you look up here in the sky, yep. you see Orion, oh, yeah. the constellation, so I'm going to get a few shots that has That'd Orion in the sky, yeah, so let me see, even though I've got that light from the, from the half full moon, right. I still need to bump up that ISO, I'm shooting at ISO 1600, okay. aperture is F4, 
And I uh, think I'm going to try, first of all, shutter speed of about 20 seconds and see what happens. Now I know that. the F4 will work in this situation because we're using a, a wide angle lens and we're close to the subject. So we've got depth of field. That's a good point. And I, actually, is this 14 millimeter lens that I'm using for this shot here? So yeah, I mean, what's the waterfall there? It's about uh, 30 feet yeah, if away. That. So, I mean, even if I was shooting wide open at F2.8, I would have enough depth of field to cover to cover both of those and get them both in focus. So when you're trying to determine exposure on, on a nighttime scene like this, what's a good uh, rule of thumb as a starting point to try to, I mean, because obviously you're gonna be shooting at, you know, anywhere from what, 20, yeah. 30 seconds? And you can't exactly take a meter reading, no. you know, at night. So uh, from experience, I've learned that on a, on a night like this, when you've got a half full moon, I can go with that ISO 1600 F4 in about 20 seconds. Okay. Now, if it was, uh, if we didn't have any light from the moon, then I'd probably want to bump it up to 30 seconds right. and open up the aperture to about 2.8 and shoot wide open uh, for that. I'm shooting, I could bump it up to 2.8 now, but I'd, I'd really like just, just in case that extra fudging, right. you know, you want to do that for the depth of field if you can. So um, that's what I do. Now, if it was um, a full moon, right. then that would be a different situation too. We have a lot of light with the full moon. With that, then I wouldn't shoot that. With those settings, it's probably about ISO 800 okay. instead of 1600. Yeah, I know the, the little bit of night photography that I've done, you know, I always err on the lowest ISO I can get away with because of the noise situation. Sure. You know, sure. we've got a lot of dark area, and that's yeah. generally where noise shows up. Yeah, yeah, you're going you're gonna to get that. So, yeah. Well, let me get this, but now I'll show you what I'm going to do now. I'm going to take my flashlight and I'm going to illuminate. Over on the left-hand side of the falls, uh -huh. where it's kind of dark, I'm going to get this rock right here, and I'm going to get the, the the trees, the foliage part of it here. Will that uh, be enough this, light right? to pop out the green in the foliage and some of those fall colors? With the because we have the half full moon, yeah. yeah. Uh, in in the 20 second exposure. Now, if uh, if we didn't have that, then I might have to do a longer exposure. Might actually, sometimes what I'll do is I'll shoot two exposures or even more exposures. Okay. And I'll stack those together using the light and blend mode in Photoshop. Okay. And that will bring out the light from all of the exposures. This but, is tip, but typically I try to do it in one, I'll just do it for a longer period of time. The issue that I have here though, I'm trying to include Orion. Right. So if I go longer than 30 seconds, then it's gonna start streaking. Oh yeah. And yeah, I, you're either going to do star trails or you want pinpricks. I want pinpoints. Right. right now, I'm going for pinpoints. So I'm trying to keep that exposure 30 seconds or less. I got you. Um, and, and, I, and I'm fine. We've got the half full moon right now. Right. So it's not a problem. Let's utilize it. Yeah. So let me, i tell you what, let's kill these lights. Okay. And let me go ahead and get this exposure. Okay. And then I'll set up a different composition and uh, see what we can do. All right, so. when you're ready, we'll kill them. All right, let's do All it. All right, kill them. Okay, Doug, you can turn those blame lights back on. Well, how'd it look? I think it's gonna be okay. I think so. But I'm gonna try out a different composition. I mean, you know, it's just like what we were doing earlier today. I mean, you get in a good situation, you want to try it out. Night right. photography is no different. So, I mean, look at all the trouble we had to do to get here. Oh, I so know. I want to take advantage of all the situations. Absolutely. I want to do a horizontal here. Now I'm going to do the same, the same general approach. And that's with the waterfall on the left-hand side okay. leading into the frame. That's looking pretty good. I'll have to do more light painting on this one. I just make sure that I cover and get that, and I'm gonna try to get a little bit of the pool here. All right, kill the lights. All right, kill the lights, guys. Okay, lights. Okay, I think that's gonna be good. Okay, good. Yeah, I think so. So in a situation where you don't have any moon at all, I mean, where do you even begin? I know you're going to have to paint the whole waterfall with just the flashlight, right? 
Yeah, yeah. I mean, how do you know how long to keep the flashlight in, in one area without burning it out? Oh, it's trial and error. Is it really? It's trial and error. You just get set up, you make a guess at the exposures. Now I've been doing it long enough that I have a pretty good idea. Right. But still, it's the, it's the same thing every time too. Even though I have an idea, I still set it up at that. Trip the shutter, I start light painting, and I'm just taking the flashlight, you know, and I'm just, just move it, trying to move it around so it doesn't get real splotchy. Right. So don't keep leave it, it in, even. Make it even. Don't keep it in one spot too long. And, you know, make a guess and then look at it and see. You know, look at the LCD and look at it, look at the histogram and then make a decision. Oops, I need to go more, I need to go less, whatever. And what, what you'll find is now with the, because it's a waterfall, it reflects, it's white, right. it reflects a lot of the light. So you don't have to light paint the waterfall nearly as much as you do some of the surroundings. Area, yeah. And if you look up here, you can see we've got this lichen. It's really light. Rock up here is covered in lichen. That will really hot spot if you put too much light on that. Right. But the dark rocks on the side, that needs a lot of light. And the vegetation, you know, this is evergreens. Right. It's rhododendron and pine trees and stuff. So you, it really soaks up the light. You got to throw a lot on that too. Well now, going back to the light quality, all flashlights cast a different color light. I mean, is that something to consider when you're buying oh, a flashlight? Absolutely. I mean, I, I won't buy a flashlight if I can't try it out right. beforehand. Now the good thing is most of the LED lights, if you get a good LED light, it's generally gonna have a fairly white light, but there are some out there that'll have a color cast to it. Okay. I wanna start out with a white light. Right. So if I want white, I've got white. But very often, I want the color of the light that I'm light painting to be different. And that's when I, let me show you what I've got here. Get my, I use, uh, you know about the Roscoe gel swatches? You oh yeah, use those before. absolutely, that's what I was gonna so, say. Yeah. I'm used to using those. So I just, all different colors. I mean, you can paint it whatever color you want to. I mean, I've got every color you can imagine with the gels, but usually a blue colored gel. Very subtle, it's though. A, very subtle, very subtle. And it, yeah, in fact, if, if, you, if you looked at the photograph, and if I didn't tell you that I'd used a blue gel, you might not even know it. Right. Uh, but, if you, but if you looked at it side by side with the, without the gel, then you'd know it. And now the thing is, now to do it, to mount it on there, here, let me show you what I've got here. I'll just take one of them out here. Uh, here's one that I use. Uh, I got so frustrated with holding these things in front of the front of the flashlight. Can't find my flashlight. You know, trying to hold it or right. tape it or whatever. I just got frustrated with that. So I said, enough is enough. I designed my own holder. It's called okay. a gel grip, and it works very easily. You just slide that gel filter right in there. And using Velcro, wow. boom, right there. Colored light. Works great. And uh, I could put different, you know, several gels in there and stack them. That's works. a great little invention. Oh, it works I'll really good. I'll have to good. buy one off of you before I leave. <laughs> Double for you. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Double price. Now, did I hear you say that you use automatic white mounts for your night stuff? Yeah, I switched to digital, what, uh, six or seven years ago, okay. something like that and I set the camera on auto white balance and haven't switched it since. I'm not using the same camera as I had back then, right. but I've been, yeah, I've been using auto white balance. So you're making corrections in, in your process? In post process. Okay. And when you're doing this night photography and you're dragging this stuff up and you're fumbling around in the dark, you're doing all that, you want things to be as simple as, as you possibly can. Well, you think you've about got everything you want here? Yeah, I got that vertical, got that horizontal there, but. Before we leave tonight, I do want to get right up against the rock and shoot a, a kind of a profile shot yeah. on the waterfall. You, you want again? We'll try out everything possible, you know. Yeah. Well, you know, on the other side of here, looking forward, that would be a great shot. But you know, we've had a good bit of snow for this time of year, yeah. and we've had a lot of rain. And this waterfall doesn't normally look like this. Yeah. I've been here with you before. In the daytime, spray. yeah, and I mean, we'd be the getting spray, spray over there now. Yeah, I've, I've actually been, I spent the night there doing night photography one night where I set up and I did no moon. Okay. So I was doing the pinpoint stars, ISO 1600, 30 seconds, F2.8, yep. and light painting the waterfall and the surroundings a little bit. 
And then after I took a few shots like that, I set up and did star trails okay. so that I could get the streaks over the waterfall. Oh, wow, I bet and, that's beautiful. Oh, yeah. For that, I used my intervalometer yeah. so that I could set the camera to shoot continuous. And for that particular one, I was shooting four minute exposures. I was at F4, four minutes, and ISO 200 okay. for that. And then what, and for the first exposure, and I tested it four to make sure this would work, but the first exposure, I light painted the waterfall for, I think it was probably about a minute into, maybe two minutes into that exposure, so that I got the light painting part of it done. Then I let the camera run through the exposures for two hours. I crawled in the sleeping bag. <laughs> so I was right over there on the bank for two hours, you know, while the camera's doing its thing. It's pretty cool. Uh, that's neat. That's that's really neat. You know, and that's what you gotta do. You gotta put your time in for these type of shots. Yeah. This is this is the difference between a snapshot and a fine art piece. You know, snapshots are We're not you exactly walk up and snapshots. No, this is not tonight, exactly. I mean, we've yeah. already put in you know a couple <laughs> of hours at least just just for this little short segment to share it with others. And um, but you know what? It's two thirty in the morning. And it's cold. And I was a little <laughs> reluctant to even come yeah. out here with you because you wouldn't tell me what we were doing. But I'm ready for the bed. <laughs> All right. Okay. I get. I guess we. Let me run over here right quick Go and ahead. get that one profile shot, and then we can head on. Sounds good. Okay. No matter the season, or even whether it's day or night, the Southern Appalachian Mountains and its thousands of waterfalls is always a great place to photograph. I'd like to thank Kevin Adams for taking time to share with us his very unique ways of photographing these waterfalls. More information about this show and Kevin Adams' work is available online. And remember, it's not just about the photograph, it's the outdoor experience. I'm your host, Doug Gardner. Thank you for joining me on another wild photo adventure. technique for shooting waterfalls at night. I'm, I'm just a good looking talent. <laughs> Speak for yourself. By the way, you better not put that in there. Oh, you wait. <laughs> that is really nice. I don't know if I can do this. It sounds so bad. Hey guys, if you like what you're seeing, be sure to click below to subscribe and share.